Um, hi, if you're here um, and welcome, it's good to see people already in the chat uh, saying hi and also looks like some of you have been in for a few web classes back to back today. So that's great to see. Uh, please do say hi as well. So I know you can hear me OK. Um, but yeah, great to see so many of you here again. And we're going to be looking at a higher maths topic today of recurring decimals. So that'd be great. Let me know as well if you've seen this before, you know what this is. Give me an idea of whether this is revision or if this is brand new content for some people. Uh, welcome, hi, welcome guys, lovely to see you messaging. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the chat so I can see throughout if you've got any questions or um, answers as well as we go. Hi, yeah, I'm really good, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm pleased that we've got a nice busy evening in store for you, obviously, lots of um, sessions on today, giving you a kind of idea of how the web classes will run. Um, so that's great. It's great to see that um, so many of you are ready to get started. Some of you have had a little look at this topic before. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now and get cracking. But uh, thank you to those of you that have, have joined already and said hello. And um, yeah, we'll get started now. That's great. So I'm going to share my screen and hopefully you'll all be able to see my PowerPoint now. There we go. I'll make it full screen for you. Um, here we go. So recurring decimals, another key number based topic for the GCSE. Um, so we'll, we'll see how we get on with this and try and get as far through the material as we can. Um, welcome if you've just joined and uh, great to see so many of you back here for these sessions. Uh, I'm going to get started. And as I said, please do be active in the chat with answers and questions as we go. So that's me again, and those that have been here before will know that. Um, head of maths at Snap Revise. I did my maths degree um, about five years ago now, just over, and um, I've been teaching maths ever since, A level and GCSE and below. Um, what we're offering, obviously, as you know, is the GCSE tutoring kind of packages available uh, on Snap Revise on the website. And this is kind of demonstrating the kind of web classes we do. There's also drop-ins. And we really go through the syllabus carefully, looking at every single topic. So I know some of you will have heard this a few times before, uh, but just for those that are new, um, this is something that's on offer on Snap Revise if you haven't checked it out before. Welcome, right, great to see so many of you um, again, and um, some new people as well, I think, but if you've been here before, welcome back. Um, excellent. So just uh, a reminder that we've still got this code going. I think it's going to expire on the 9th of March uh, next week. Um, but this is a two week free trial of the Snap Revise web classes, the tutoring um, accounts that are on the Snap Revise website, which I'll show you later. So if you've, you haven't used that yet, be aware you can still sign up with that today. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. What we're going to do for now is have a little look at this topic of recurring decimals, what a recurring decimal is, and also the kind of questions that will come up at GCSE that we have to be really familiar with. Um, cool. So I'll explain later where to put that code in and how to sign up. I'll crack on with this content for now and we'll have a little look on the website towards the end. This is um, a higher tier topic but kind of useful to know for those of you even doing foundation, uh, the fractions, decimals and percentages will be a key part of the number work. This is a bit of an extension of that. So this is a higher tier topic. And as I've said before, this kind of content is good for all exam boards. It's a very standard topic that's part of the GCSEs. So when the GCSEs changed a couple of years ago, um, same as the A-levels, it's all been very much the same sort of content uh, in terms of the key ideas that need to be examined. So this is very much examinable for all boards. Excellent, right. So what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna start off with some kind of recap of things we should know um, and just ideas that are gonna tie in. So this number here, 181.327, just a reminder that this is just sort of place value. So that means like one, lot of 10 squared, that's kind of like eight, lots of 10. That's like one lot of 10 to the zero. And so the number system we use is kind of 
we, we're dealing with powers of 10, it's base 10. So we're looking, um, those that have seen standard form might recognize this, but just sort of the general way we write numbers with the columns, we're dealing with place value. So we should all be familiar with place value um, and what it is. And um, so I'm just gonna quickly do a little reminder of that. Um, but obviously we should be confident in writing numbers there. Oh, apologies if there's been any lag or it's frozen or anything. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay now. Converting between fractions, decimals and percentages is really important, but there are obviously some key types of fractions and decimals that we should be really confident with. So hopefully things like 0 0.5, knowing that that's equal to a half, knowing that a quarter is 0 0.25. These are kind of the kind of fraction decimal conversions we wanna be really quick at. Now this one, one fifth, this is where some people um, start to, it's very easy to confuse this and make mistakes. If it's easier, some people like to think of this as two tenths and then simplify their fraction down. So that's it in its simplest form. Um, one twentieth, does anyone know what that is as a decimal? One twentieth. Very good. And if you think about it, one twentieth is 10 times smaller than a half. So it is actually 0 0.05. Very good. Lovely. Uh, so there's a few ways that people deal with this. It might be that with a lot of these fractions and decimals, you've committed them to memory. That's not a problem. Um, but it's it's worth having a way of working them out as well um, sometimes. So nine eighths. This is what we would call obviously an improper fraction. It's top heavy, it's more than one whole. Uh, does anyone know what this is? No worries, that's fine guys. Thanks for sharing answers as well. Excellent, Evan, absolutely. This is 1.125. So it was a little bit trickier that one. Um, it's one and one eighth. So you might first of all think of it like this, one and one extra eighth. And an eighth as a decimal is half of a quarter. So half of 25%, 12.5%, it's an extra one, two, five as a decimal. So that one was a little bit trickier, but very well done. That's great to see so many of you are quite confident with these ideas already. The other thing we also need to be quite confident with in terms of as a process is division. Now division is probably the one of the four operations that people like the least. Um, but obviously long division is something we've hopefully seen. Some people are more inclined to use short division but one quarter is effectively one divided by four. A fraction is basically a division. So we know that a quarter, as I said, is 0 0.25, but just as what might seem like a basic reminder, we are effectively dividing one into four bits. So if I just show you with the process of division, division how we can do this, how we can convert, um, yeah, exactly, a fraction into a decimal, you can say, um, how many times does four go into one? Well, it doesn't, but it does, we can think of as like 10. How many times does four go into 10? And four will go into 10 twice. So if I say, well, what would two times that be? Two times this thing here be, I'd have 0 0.8. So if I times those together, and if I take that away using the kind of long division method, I end up with the two. That's great. And then um, let's just check, I can still see uh, the chat, yep. And then if I say how many times is four going to two, it doesn't, how many times is it going to 20? Five times. And I do that multiplication and take it away. I get no remainders. So the answer is 0 0.25 as a decimal. So excellent. Now you probably aren't gonna use that process for a quarter because you're confident with that conversion. But what we need to look at is the kind of long division method for some of these harder questions. So we're gonna look at converting both ways. There's an algebraic technique for converting recurring decimals back into fractions. But I first wanna go into finding recurring decimals and what they actually are. So that's what we're gonna look at now. Now, a recurring decimal uh, does anyone know what this is? If you've seen it before, maybe give a little description of your understanding of what a recurring decimal 
is. What actually am I talking about here? So a recurring decimal, what are we, what are we describing or defining that as? And this is an interesting one because it's right. There's a few little things we need to really tighten up about these definitions, but that's great. Thank you to those sharing numbers as well already. A decimal with infinitely many digits. Um, in a repeating pattern. Now this is the crucial bit, like reoccurring, recurring, repeating pattern. So this is really crucial to our understanding of it. Um, a, de a re recurring decimal is what we would call a rational number um, because we can write it as a fraction. Things like pi and square root of two, they are not recurring. They, are, they do have an infinite number of decimal places, but you can't write them as a fraction. So they're a little bit nastier than these numbers uh, because we need some sort of symbolic notation to denote them. So these are like an infinite number of decimal places like those irrational numbers. The difference is these numbers can be written as a fraction. So we can look at what the repeating pattern is doing and tidy that up and express it nicely as a fraction. And that's what we're going to be doing today. But brilliant, um, because we've teased out some of those ideas there. And actually, it's a very easy thing to confuse because there is this infinite nature to it, like pi, like um, some other numbers we might know, some of the square root third numbers. But um, the difference is recurring decimals can be written as fractions. And that's specifically what we're going to look at. So just to check we know the notation as well, 0 0.3 with the dot means 0 0.3 recurring. This effectively means 0 0.3333 infinitely, which feels like a bit of a strange concept when we first see it. Brilliant. And some of you will know what that is as a fraction. I'm just gonna write out long ways what these mean. Can anyone tell me what the second one here would be written as? We've got to be very careful with this. Cool. Yep, so this would be 0 0.75, and it's actually just the five that's recurring. Well done. So there's not a dot on both bits, so it's actually just the five that repeats infinitely. If we have two dots, that tells us where the sort of chain of recurring stuff starts and ends. So this would go 0 0.89, 0 0.89, and that would be the infinitely repeating pattern. Now this one here, 0.56, it's the seven that recurs, and then there's a repeating pattern infinitely. Brilliant. This one here, 0.12312, and so on, infinitely. And that's great. Cool. And then the next one, I'm just going to write out, we can look at what bit is recurring, and it is that. So very good. So understanding this notation is really important um, for it. So very well done. And thank you to those that have shared answers there. That's lovely. Um, and this, I mean, if it comes up like this, just kind of write out long ways, that's great. But this feeds into what we're going to be doing today. So um, I'm going to move on. But and thank you to all those comments there as we've started that. Uh, we can find the recurring decimal of a fraction by basically, um, oops, by using long division or short division, but I'm going to go through using division. And actually also some techniques as we go and get more confident with this, we might actually start to spot stuff, which could save us um, some work and spotting. And we're going to talk about that technique now and spotting a repeating pattern. A repeating Pattern. Right, so here we go. Um, right, so this one here, one sixth um, as a, and we're going to do it as a decimal. 
So what we can do is we can say we're basically dividing one into six equal bits. Now this is again one of these kind of questions where we have to go a little bit carefully. Okay. So well done if you think you know what the answer is already or you've worked it through, let me know. Uh, but I'm going to go through this process. So six doesn't go into one fully, but it does go into 10 once. Okay, and if I do that multiplication, if I take off one lot of, of uh, 0 0.1 lots of six and see what's left, I'm going to be left with 0 0.4. Now, if I do six into that, I'm just putting enough zeros that I need. Um, if I do six into that, how many times is six going for? It doesn't. How many times is six going to 40? It goes in six times because it goes into 36. Um, so 0 0.36, zero, zero, zero. And we'll look at what's remaining. And if I take them away, you'll notice I get the same scenario happening again. And I'm going to end up with the same issue carrying on if I do the division. And so I'm going to get six again with another remainder of four and keep going. And some of you might think, oh, that's a really tedious long division method. I like short division. That's not a problem either. If you prefer going um, one into 10 and just using the short division bus stop method and carrying on the remainders, you'd still get this answer, as I can see some of you have done. Um, so very well done if um, what if that's what you did. So well done um, if you got that. And yes, I'm going to keep going. So uh, thank you to those that are sharing answers, you know, really well and questions um, appropriately and everything in the chat. That's been great. Um, I'm going to keep going because I think some of us will want to get onto some harder topics here um, and build on this idea. But as I said, short division or long division, and our answer will be 0.16, where the six is recurring. Lovely. Um, I'll try and answer any questions if it's if um, there's anything confusing, uh, but we'll go through a few more examples for now. So this one here, one eleventh, eleventh. Now you may know what this is. You might be quite confident with this. Do let me know in the chat if you think you've already got it. Um, but again, we're going to do this process of division. So I'm dividing one by 11, which doesn't go nicely. So I'm going to put some zeros in place to help me do this. Okay. So I'm just trying to make sure I've not missed anything because it's, uh, there's like lots of different things happening in the chat. I'm just trying to keep up with what we're asking. Good if you've submitted an answer. Um, so it, to have to be recurring, it will have a dot. If it would have at most two dots, if there's like a repeating pattern of stuff that recurs. Um, so that's the way we would denote it. So I'm going to show you with this example. Um, yeah, exactly. So if it has a, a dot on top, that's indicative that it's recurring. It's repeating infinitely. Um, so as I said, I'm going to go 11 into one. I can't do that. So I say 11, how many times is 11 going to 10? I can't actually do that either. How many times does 11 go into 100? I'm thinking of this as it goes in nine times because it will go up to 99. So it will go in nine times and nine times that. So I'm effectively, I've divided into 0 0.99 and then I'm going to take that out and see what's left. Okay, and I get 0 0.01000. And then I'm going to do the same process. Okay, so how many times does 11 go into one? It doesn't. How many times into 10? It doesn't. How many times into 100? And again, it goes in. So it won't go into 10. It won't it will go into 100. So I do the same process again. And I effectively have the same issue um, repeating. So what I'm going to have here is when I times that by nine, I get, um, where are we at? And the same thing is gonna carry on. And so what the answer will be for this one is the recurring bit will be 0 0.09 recurring. And the two dots indicate that it goes 0, 09, 0, 09, 0, 09. 
So let me just see if I can see the chat. Oh, okay, maybe this is referring to something a little bit earlier. Let me just backtrack and check I hadn't missed it. Yeah, so this, this thing here, this notation, if this is what we were talking about, this actually means, it doesn't just mean that it goes 0 0.1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3. The whole string of stuff recurs. So is this what we were talking about? Yeah, so this actually repeats one, two, three. If we did want to denote this, the way we would actually show that is we'd put the dot above there and there, and that would just mean the three and one keep repeating. But the way we denote this is put the dot above the start and finishing one. So hopefully that's clarified that, but thank you to those that were just discussing that um, in the chat. Cool, so let's just check we've got, um, this is all making sense, excellent. Right, so the next one, if anyone's got an answer for it already, I'm just gonna scroll back and see if there was an answer and I've missed it. Uh, feel free to give this one a try and then we're gonna move on. So this one here, we're dividing one, 37 into one, which again, I've got to kind of extend this idea. Um, and what we're gonna get is it's not gonna go in nicely. So we're gonna check for 10, which it doesn't go into, check for 100 it goes in twice. And if I do 0 0.02 times 37, that would be 0 0.74. And if I take that off, what I'm gonna be left with, and then I'm gonna do 37 into that, um, and, it, and then check 360, which it will go seven times. carry on and then what I'm left with um, will be 0 0.001 and again from here it repeats a bit like this bit where I'm going to get 740 and again you can still use short division if you prefer it but this is where it's going to recur as 2727 I'm going to have an infinite pattern okay so well done if you got um that cool so i think this one should be 0 0.027 recurring can we agree with that oh sorry no you are right well done the, the whole thing is recurring um because it's going to go zero and then again so the dot should be there and there Oh, and then two, seven. Is that what we got? Yeah, excellent. Thank you guys, well spotted. My deliberate mistake there. Um, well done, excellent, lovely. And what we'll do is um, I'm gonna just have a little checkpoint now of how we're feeling with that. So it's a little bit tedious and number crunchy, especially if you're using long division, but what we're hopefully gonna see is that actually when we spot certain things like um, thirds, ninths, elevenths, it can actually help us speed this process up. And we're gonna learn a real um, couple of really good techniques for the reverse process now. So, okay, excellent questions. Um, we don't convert a recurring to a non-recurring. That's a really good question. What we would convert it to is a fraction. If the number is recurring, it is recurring. If, if you change it to anything else, you'd effectively be changing the number. You can certainly round it, but what we're gonna be looking at doing is expressing it exactly. That was a brilliant question. The way we express it exactly is to put it as a fraction. So really well done and welcome to anyone that's just joined. Uh, we're gonna carry on, look at some exam questions now. Uh, so when one ninth is changed to a decimal, it is recurring like this. Show how you would indicate that this, is, uh, this decimal is recurring. This is a really easy, quick throwaway one mark. That's probably not so easy when you're trying to write it in a chat. So I'm just gonna write this in for you all quickly now. And this would be 0 0.1 with the dot above it. So hopefully we're all absolutely clear on that now. Excellent and well done. Well said if you've explained that in the chat, nice one. Um, actually denoting it might've been more of a challenge. Now using division, change five sixths um, to a decimal. So some people might go about, well, I find one sixth and then I'll just times it by five, which 
effectively works, but we're going to do this process of using division here. So very well done. So what we're going to do is we're going to say how many times does six go into five? Well, it doesn't go in um, a nice number of times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go how many times does six go into 50? And it will go in eight times. And that would be 4.8. And if I subtract that off to see what's kind of the remaining bit I've got to deal with for division, I'm going to be left with um, 0 0.200. Well done. Some of you have got there already. You've beaten me to it. And then I'm saying six into this number. It, how many times is six going to 20? We've, we're going to think of. Um, it's going to go in three times. And that will be, we'll be minusing off 0.18. And then again, if I do this subtraction, what you're going to notice is we're going to get the repeating pattern happening again. And it will be three, three, and it will just forever leave that same remainder. And therefore the decimal will continue to be three infinitely. Brilliant. And so the way we can write that is 0 0.83 and the dot above the three, because it's the three that's recurring. And well done, if you knew what one sixth was from where we did it earlier and you multiplied that by five, that would effectively get you there as well. But you can just do the straightforward from division again from scratch and just do the whole question from there. So nice sort of breakdown of different styles of how this can come up, but we're gonna keep going. So what I'm gonna do is I think, I'll skip ahead now just because I'm mindful of the time um, to converting recurring decimals into fractions. So what we've got is, um, I'm just gonna kind of go through this process. Some of you might have seen this before, but very well done um, up to that stage. Uh, and hopefully that was all clear for you. So recurring decimals, all recurring decimals are what we would call rational numbers. Um, and I, I know we've had a little brief discussion on this already. They're what we would call rational numbers which, can, which means they can be written as a fraction. Excellent, lovely. So it's very number-based, uh, but it is an important topic. And it gets into some weird, quirky ideas of like these, this infinite idea being able to be tidied up really nicely. So rational numbers, which can be written, uh, rewritten as a fraction. Um, and already I've had some brilliant questions in about this to really consolidate your understanding. So thank you to those that have done that as a fraction. So what we're going to do um, is the, essentially the process of this. Excellent. Well done, Evan. Pi and E and root two and root five, they're what we'd call irrational numbers. You can't write those numbers as a fraction because there's not a nice repeating pattern in their decimal. So they need their own little symbol to be able to express them exactly. Now to convert a recurring decimal to a fraction, if we call that recurring decimal, we're trying to convert X, because we like using the letter X, um, multiply, I'm gonna go through the steps and then we'll do this process together. Sorry if I've already missed this, but who has done this before? Who's maybe seen this idea before? It'd be really good to have an indication of if you've converted recurring to, um, recurring decimals to fractions before, but if not, no worries. Right, so the way we do it is we basically, uh, multiply, we're using sort of powers of 10 to move it up a place value, uh, multiply by powers of 10. Um, powers of 10. Um, right, I'll, I'll clarify that in a second. Um, recurring decimals are not integers, they're what we'd call rational. Um, so integer means whole number, but another brilliant question there. So that's fine. No worries if this is new to you. This would be a great skill to go through together. Um, so we'll do that now. Um, so multiply it by powers of 10 um, uh, to bring out iterations of the pattern. And you might think, what does that mean? Um, but we will go for it with a nice clear example. Um, and then what we'll do is we're going to subtract um, 
to eliminate and it's actually a really cool skill when we think about it when I'll, we'll bring it all together towards the end uh, the recurrence and then what we do is we divide by the power of 10 now I will illustrate this as I said with a really clear example of 10 minus multiple and then finally simplify answer and you might be thinking what is he talking about there um, but as I go through it with some examples this will this will really bring it to life so here we go so here we go this is an example we want to write 0 0.1666 recurring as a fraction so the way I do this if I imagine that this is x x is 0.16 blah 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 forever okay now the really cool thing we can do here i'm just going to show you what we do so it goes on infinitely and i want to write it as a fraction what we do is we go okay there's two decimal places before it repeats so i go 0.1 and then i need another decimal so if i times this by 100 what would 100x be equal to so you might think well i know what 10x would be equal to I'd move it up um, by one decimal place. What would 100x be equal to? What would 100 times that number be equal to? Let me know in the chat. Um, it would be 16.6 recurring. Excellent, well done. Does everyone, does that make sense? Brilliant, well done. 10x would be 1.6 recurring. 100x would be 16.6 recurring. Lovely, I've just moved it up two columns, basically, two place values. So what I can do now is if I take the 100x and I minus off, um, I minus off, say, 10x or 1x, um, because 10x, as some of you have said, is 1.6 recurring, okay? If I subtract them, subtract, how many x's am I left with? 100x minus 10x is how many x? This is a really cool process I'm going to just explain in a minute. 90 lots of that thing, 90x is equal to, and 16.6, this infinite mess of sixes, minus 1.6, another infinite mess of sixes. That actually minuses really nicely because this infinitely annoying bit completely self cancels. So 16.6666 minus 1.6666 just perfectly leaves 15. So what I've done is I've scaled the number by 10 and by 100 so that I get all those repeating decimals lining up so that when I take them away, the infinitely repeating bit self cancels. So can we see that 16.6666 forever minus 1.6666 forever will just leave 15? because the 0 0.6s forever will cancel and 16 minus one is 15. So we're just going through this process now and then I'll, I'll clarify it again. So what I've done is I've called the original number I wanna convert X. I've said what 100 X is and what 10 X is and then I've taken them away from each other. So now I know that 90 X perfectly equals 15. So if I divide both sides by 90, I get X equals 15 over 90. And then finally, I just simplify that. And 15 goes into both those numbers. So X equals one sixth. And what I've then done is I started with X as this decimal. I manipulated the algebra a bit, rearranged it and showed it can be written as this fraction here. So what I've done just to track back through those steps, because I know that was perhaps a little bit confusing, especially if this is the first time you've seen it. We've done something really powerful here. We've started with this recurring infinite mess of decimals going on. And then I've said, well, what could I scale it by? What other scale, scalars of this number do I know? Well, I know 10x would be 1.6 recurring, and I know 100x would be 16.6 recurring. And if I take them away, that would be 90x, that would be 90 times the size of this number. And that would perfectly be 15 because 16.6 forever minus 1.6 forever, all the infinite sixes cancel and I'm effectively just doing 16 minus one. 
So what we've done, um, that's okay, we'll do more of this, but thank you for letting me know. Um, and we'll, we'll bring it to life with some of the ones you're more confident with, like a third and so on. What we then do is we say, well, 90X must equal 15. And if I was like solving that, I'd divide both sides by 90. So I get X equals 15 over 90, which is a fraction I can tidy up. So we'll do, it works out really nicely when you get the hang of it, but it just does take a bit of practice. So let's do the same thing here. Let's think about 0.53. I'm gonna call that X. And are we happy that that is 0.535353 forever? That's basically what that is. Is everyone happy with that? And I might just go through this, explaining it, how I would just answer it linearly, sort of going in the process. Oh, okay, no worries. Let's do this one first. So that's what we've got. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, right, what's 10x? What is 10x? And then tell me what 100x is, just so that everyone's absolutely clear on moving it up by place values. So 10x would just be move it up one column. So what we've got, we would have 5.3535 forever. Now, that's a little bit annoying because that doesn't line up with the one above it. So if I go 100x, 100x is 53.53 recurring. So what I can do here is I can go, hang on, 100x is 53.53 recurring and normal like 1x I said was 0.53 recurring, okay? So what happens if I subtract these from each other. One lot of X is 0 0.535353 forever. And 100 times that is 53.5353 forever. So if I take one lot of it away from 100 lots of it, I've got 99X. And this infinite 53 chain of 53s gets minused away from itself. So I just get left with 53. Is everyone clear at that stage? Yeah, exactly. So we get 99 lots of X is perfectly equal to just 53. Because when I did the 100 X minus the one X, it cancelled all the 0 0.53 recurring out. And I just get left with 53. So then finally, all I do is I divide both sides by 99 and I get X is 53 99ths. And if you can simplify it, then do. But I don't believe we can simplify that. And if you were to take away on your calculator, if you were to do that division on the calculator, you'd see the answer is <clears throat> 0.53 recurring. Right, some brilliant questions there. Why do we not do, why don't we take away 10x that time? Can anyone answer that? Why don't I go, well, I found 10x, why wouldn't I use that? What, what was happening here with the decimals? We had two things recurring. What would be the problem with using 10x? 10x was... 5.35 recurring. Now, if you try and take away x from 5x, sorry, from 10x, and you've got 5.3535535 minus 0.535353, that's not a nice subtraction. Like this, it's still infinitely messy. So I basically want them to line up. Brilliant comments. So what we're trying to do, um, it's really good you're asking guys to tease this out is we need them to line up the decimals so that when we take them away, they're all perfectly in the same place value. They're in the same column so that they fully cancel. And then I just get 99X equals a whole number. And then I divide through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna do some more of these. Absolutely, especially if this is new to you. Um, so let's let's do a few more. Now this one is, is, uh, is quite involved. I'm gonna go through, um, this one quickly here, and then I might try and get onto some simpler in an exam context versions and leave you some to, to practice and try. So this one here, um, let's just check. Uh, this is like quite annoying, this one, because this is a really long decimal. Two, six, three, four, six, three, four, six, three, four, and it's that bit that recurs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, right, I wanna get it so that the whole recurring bit is a, is before the decimal. So I'm gonna times it by one, two, three, four decimal place, like place values. So I'm gonna times this by 10,000. 10,000 X, check you agree with me, 
would be 2,634 point, um, yeah, no, actually, I'm going to tell you about one, yeah, 10,000x, that's good, point six three four, where that bit is recurring. So this is higher tier, this is tricky, but once we get into the algebra kind of method, we'll be hopefully a little bit happier. Now, if you think about it, guys, what we can do here is if I just times it by 10, are we happy that that would be 2.634? And it will line up. Yeah, exactly, really well explained in the chat there. So. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, but I know that 10x is um, 2.634634 forever. So if I minus those off of each other, this infinitely repeating bit after the decimal will self-cancel. And what I end up with is 10,000x minus 10 is going to leave me with 9,000... 9,990x is equal to, and if I take that away on that side as well, I'm going to be left with 2,632. Now I divide both sides by 9,990. So x equals 2,632 over 990. So technically I have done it. I have written that recurring decimal as a fraction, but I could then potentially simplify a bit more. Okay, so then what we do here, um, good. So how do we know whether it's 10, 100 or 1,000 or 10,000? So what you do is you try and scale the first bit up so that the, the recurring bit is left in the decimal places. So you get the whole number part out before it starts recurring again. And then you find how many you need to scale it by to get the recurring bit after the decimal to line up with that. And that you could scale it multiple ways and still get them to line up, but you just do it the kind of minimal amount possible. So if it helps, you could write out, well, what's 10x, what's 100x, what's 1000x, and see at what point they pair up and then do the subtraction. Uh, but yeah, you just need to look for where they're gonna cancel from. That's brilliant um, and a great question there. Um, now this does simplify. I don't know if anyone's done that already. I'm trying to check the chat simultaneously this does simplify a bit more because we can half both of those numbers and i believe we're going to get 1316 over 4995 okay so very well done what i am keen to do is um obviously there's another one there you can try and there's a few more questions of this um i'm going to just simplify it a little bit quickly just to show you it in that maybe in a less confusing way for example 0.3 recurring, okay? Because I think we all already know what that fraction should be. Who can tell me before we even do this algebraic approach, what should that be? That's one of our classic ones we wanna notice. What is that as a, as a fraction? And it's great if this is easy, but this is an interesting one because I remember when I was younger, someone said to me, hang on, what's a third, what's a third as a decimal? It's, it's 0.3 recurring, okay. So if you times that by three, that should make one whole, but it makes 0.9 recurring, so that's wrong. And it's not, there's this really cool proof using this method that 0.9 recurring is sneakily one in disguise. So that's what I'm gonna just show you now. So this is, again, if we were to convert 0.3 recurring into a third, say we didn't know how to do that, then what we can do is if that's X, can someone tell me what 10X is equal to? And this is where it's really powerful and kind of weird. Um, 10x would be 3.3 with the infinite mess of threes. So what I can do is I can say, right, if I minus off 1x from that, this infinite line of threes is going to cancel and I'm going to be left with 9x equals 3. So if 9x equals 3, x equals three ninths, which is one third. So I've proven that 0.3 recurring is a third using this method. Okay, excellent. So 
that's also how you can prove in the same way that 0.9 recurring is actually one in disguise, um, which seems like you're just kind of broken maths, but you haven't. If it's infinitely close, it is actually that value. Um, so yeah, exactly. Um, brilliant. So hopefully that was clear. Uh, let's just check how we're feeling. So if I just move on, just to give me a quick indication, I know we've kind of gone through some big ideas quite quickly there, uh, but there were a few questions you could maybe try yourself. And then obviously you can check it on a calculator to verify, but the process is effectively call the thing you want to convert to a fraction X, scale it, take away, rearrange and simplify the fraction. Um, so let me know one, two or three, how you're feeling with that topic. Uh, but really well done. I appreciate we've gone through that quite quickly. Um, what I'm going to give you now, we'll do maybe one more exam question, um, and then there's a few you could do to sort of follow up with. So here we go. Here's an exam question, probably worth, let's say, um, maybe a couple of marks, two, three marks. Um, express that as a fraction. Brilliant. Great to hear from all of you there in the chat as well. So let's give this a go. Let's think that that is X. X is 0.478 recurring. And if I were to think of that right, so you might even be still not sure, do I want 10X, do I want 100X, do I want 1000X? Let's do them all for now just to see where we're at with it. So 10X would be 4.78 recurring. 100X would be... 47.87 recurring, but that's a bit annoying because that's not lining up. And a thousand X would be 478.78 recurring. So I think what we're going to use here is a thousand X and the 10 X because they line up. Okay, so absolutely, we'll do this question now. So let's give it a go. So if I say, right, I'm going to do a thousand X which is 478.78, and feel free to work ahead of me, absolutely. Lovely, well done if you've got it and you're happy with this, this is brilliant. Um, 10X equals, as we said, 4.78 recurring. And then if I subtract them from each other, 1000X minus 10 lots of X is gonna leave us with 990X, and that's gonna be equal to 478.78 minus uh, recurring minus this which would be 474 and the infinitely recurring bits will self cancel out and so now i've got 990x equals 474 so that means that x equals 474 over 990 and actually if you carried on simplifying that hopefully those that, of you that have done that um so you could break it into its prime factors if you know how to do that that would help you cancel it down a bit more. Um, and we could cancel out. That might be a bit complicated, but however you want to cancel it in steps, you should eventually be able to actually cancel that down to 79 over 165. So basically, if you half it, then you notice you can still divide by three. That's the simplest form you can get it to. But this is absolutely right. That is the fraction. But we want to try and aim to express it in a simplified fraction. So very well done if you got there. That was superb. Right. The dot wasn't on the four. We've got to be very careful there. And that's how, how subtle it will be. The dot is only on the seven and eight. So if it was on the four, that would change it. Absolutely. That would be a different question. So that's fair enough. So that's how closely we need to look at this and be very careful um, with this process. Uh, but it's great to see some of you have really picked that up already, especially if this was new. So very well done. Um, there's a few more questions there that you can try and maybe download um, the pack there to work through yourself. And the good thing is with this topic is you can check it on your calculator. So you can go, I know how to do this now. Um, so that was a really good point, really good question. Um, but you have, it's, it's actually, you've got to be so careful when you're reading through it. So I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for all the comments as we've gone through it there, guys. Um, so yeah, a few more questions, but what I want to just uh, mention is that we've kind of basically gone through some big ideas there, understand what a recurring decimal is with reference to like it being a rational number because we can write it as a fraction, convert from a fraction to a decimal 
by doing division and convert from a recurring decimal to a fraction using this little algebraic technique we've just learned. And that the more you practice that, it actually becomes very samey and really easy to do. So that would be something um, excellent. Well, that's brilliant, great news. Um, so there's, an, I believe there's another uh, web class uh, scheduled next, um, but we, obviously we're coming towards the end of the maths one now. Um, I'm gonna quickly just talk about, um, as I mentioned, signing up and, and the two week free trial. So quickly um, here, I'm just gonna share my screen. So for those of you that haven't done it, um, if you haven't been onto the Snap Revise website yet, if you go on to tutoring and you go down to your subject, so for example, GCSE Maths, and you join now, uh, you can put in the code that I mentioned um, to get a two week free trial and join and watch and um, take part in the web classes, the drop ins and everything that will be on the platform. And hopefully that will be a really um, a useful resource for you, especially the way you're working through these lessons on here already. Uh, so thanks very much for all your input, guys, and everything you how you've been taking part. If you think this will be useful, please do use that code. Try it out for a couple of weeks and see what we've got on the platform. There's way more than just the web classes and the interactive element. There's really nicely made um, resources for your revision so that you can tailor your own studying to the topics you struggle with and really want to improve on. Uh, so that's just worth bearing in mind. And as I mentioned, we did do a competition which ended recently for free accounts, which will be given away. So we're giving away 10 free accounts. Um, please do check your emails if you entered that competition. It might have gone into your junk mail. Make sure you've checked that because it would be great if you've won a free account that you make the most of that. Uh, as I said, there's a lot to offer on there. Um, and here's the code for the two week free trial. So please do feel free to use that uh, when you're joining, when you click join now and sign up and see if it's for you, see if you know the resources you find are useful. Um, the whole course is you know, really looked at in depth and carefully. So it should all be nicely tailor-made um, to help you with your own studying. So um, again, thank you very much to all of you that have joined today and all your input, your comments. And also the description some of you have given to each other in the chat that's been so useful and helped really drive this web class forward for us. So um, I really appreciate that. And um, it was lovely talking to you and seeing some of you here again. Um, and I hope that will continue. Um, I'm going to stop there. So I think that was um, that was great. Um, and I'm mindful of the time now, but have a good rest of the evening, guys. I hope to see you again at these sessions soon and I hope you all keep well. And yeah, thanks again. I'll, um, I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks guys. Well done.